Hey Defenders, welcome back. So what are one of the basic building blocks of any seam stacks? Well, that is first to ingest data. And throughout this series, we've already shown you guys how we can ingest data and logs from our endpoints via the Wazoo agent or receiving syslog events that we're forwarding the gray log from our network devices. But what about some of those pesky applications where maybe they can only send an event via a webhook or maybe you have your own custom integration where you may want to output the results of whatever the application is doing and you want to suggest that into your seam stack but it's not writing to a local log file or there's no API endpoints that you can query to retrieve that data and bring it in. Well, one cool solution that we can implement is actually implementing webhooks via Shuffle. So likely your SIEM environment is going to be running within an internal network. And when you're wanting to receive webhooks, especially from a third party such as Cloudflare, where the receiving webhook must be publicly available and you don't necessarily want to introduce any complexities within your internal network or potentially poke any holes within your firewall. One cool thing that we can leverage is an integration between Shuffle and Copilot to be able to receive events from our webhook and then ingest those into our local and internal seam stack. So a little bit about how this is going to work is Cloudflare is going to, and really this could be in, uh, any application or tool, is going to forward to our public webhook. And we're going to host this on Shuffle and particularly Shuffle's cloud environment, right? And then we're going to create a workflow within Shuffle to receive that data and then send it to our local copilot. So local, meaning this is within our internal network. Right, Copilot. And we're going to leverage Shuffle's hybrid runtime location, which I'll link to that in a previous video if you haven't set that up already. So let's go ahead and actually jump into that. And so again, a quick review, what challenge is this looking to solve? Well, for some of these pesky applications or tools whose events we still want to ingest into our Steam stack, but they maybe are limited on what notification channels they support, in this case, just being a listening webhook, we can leverage Shuffle's cloud to serve as our webhook endpoint and then still leverage Shuffle to ingest those events into our local and internal seam stack using Copilot. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. So I'm gonna jump into Shuffle and here I'm gonna create a workflow. I'll just call it webhook demo and I'll go ahead and start this guy or and save this guy. And then what I'm first going to do, as soon as I get in here, I'm first going to delete this guy. And then I'm going to drag over a webhook. And here I'll just say, since I'm going to simulate Cloudflare, I'll just say Cloudflare webhook. And I'm going to go ahead and set start. So now I can interact with this webhook. For example, I can run a very simple curl request um, to that publicly hosted uh, webhook right, which is what we just copied from Shuffle. And I'm just gonna send it a body of message with test webhook from curl. Sure enough, we get a response back of a success is true. And if we go back into Shuffle and uh, select our little running man here, we see that our webhook has to actually receive data. And here we see that data. So we verified that our webhook is publicly listening. And so how exactly are we going to get this into our local seam stack? Well, for that, we're going to use Copilot. So within Copilot here, one prereq that you guys will need to do is configure your event shipper. This is a listening input within Greylog because we're still leveraging Greylog to do our uh, any log normalization, our routing that fits into our multi-tenancy model. Um, and I'll also link down to that uh, to a previous video where we configured and set up that as well. So make sure you do have this connector verified before continuing on. And there are a few other prereqs that we need because we want to do multi-tenancy, right? And how do we do multi-tenancy within the Seam stack? Well, that's going to be by leveraging our customer code. So I'm going to create a few workflow variables that I can define within my workflow here and then reference them from the different apps that Shuffle is going to run. So my first one that is going to be a requirement, the Copi, uh, the Copilot API endpoint will return an error if you don't include the integration. So for this, I'm gonna say Cloudflare and you'll see why this is important here when it comes to setting up our routing within Greylog. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that value. I'm gonna go ahead and create another one called Customer Code. 
and that is going to be a lab. If you're looking for your customer code, you can always go into Graylog, or sorry, into Copilot under customers here and select the customer code. So here I have lab. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And then lastly, I'm going to create a variable for my Copilot endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that value here. And then I'll paste the API endpoint of my internal Copilot. You will notice that this is a public IP. I can see how that's kind of confusing, but it is being invoked locally. So this would likely just be a local internal IP address, like a 10 dot or a 192 dot. But what you will need to do is replace, of course, your IP address that I've provided here with your own. Do not modify the port or the path. Uh, that will be static, but you will, of course, need to update to your correct IP address. So go ahead and submit that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to first need to add these variables to our data payload. Right. And well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and jump back into apps and I'm going to select my shuffle tool. I'm going to draw a line here. I'm also and I'm going to find the action of set JSON key. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. The JSON object is just going to be the execution argument. So I'm just going to go ahead and just select the exec here that you'll see that my key is going to be integration. And then the value is going to be the integration variable that I'm setting, which is going to be equal to Cloudflare, which is what we just defined. So go ahead and save that. Oh, I'll also go ahead and make this the start node. Um, so this will be the first guy to run within the workflow. And now let's see what happens. Uh, if I rerun my previous workflow where we just got the test webhook, so if we go ahead and rerun this, we should see now a new entry also added to our payload. And sure enough, here we see our original message that was received from the webhook. And then we see our new integration uh, key and value now being added. So that looks good. Uh, I can clean this up a little bit. I'll say add integration key. And then I'm also going to do the same for the customer code. So very similar. Uh, here I'll set the name as add customer code. Uh, actions is going to also be the set JSON key. Now, instead of pointing to the execution argument, I'm actually going to point to the next app up because I also want the payload to include the integration key. So I'll go ahead and select the add integration key JSON object here. My key is going to be customer code. And then my value is going to be my customer code uh, variable that I've set, which is going to be equal to lab. So if we save this guy, and now let's run this to make sure we should now see another execution and we should see message integration and customer code. So let's go ahead and see what we get. And sure enough, we get message integration and customer code. So, all right, so now let's actually see what an actual uh, Cloudflare event looks like coming in. And so here, what I've taken is just a example payload from Cloudflare. So this is what the data looks like coming from Cloudflare when it invokes that webhook. So it looks like we got an email that matched a malicious signature. So let's go ahead and execute and run this. And now let's go back into our shuffle workflow and let's go ahead and see what's going on. So if we go back to all runs and if I uh, select our latest run, so here we see all of our items coming through. So we see our full payload uh, being, being received by shuffle. Uh, we see integration key. All right, we see add customer code. So now if I open up this object here, we should see our full payload. So we see our full payload that we received from Cloudflare. And we also sure enough see our values that we've set our Cloudflare integration and our lab customer code. So all this is looking good. Now let's go ahead and ingest it into our seam stack. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the HTTP app to submit a post request to our Copilot endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my HTTP app. And first, what I'm actually gonna do is select the runtime location of the same environment where my Copilot application is running. In this case, is going to be my lab environment. My URL, I'm going to set to the Copilot endpoint. I'm gonna change my action to a post. And within the here, the full body that I'm going to send is going to be the next node up or the next app up, which is going to be the add customer code. So that guarantees we not only get our Cloudflare payload, but we get our integration key and also our customer code key. So if we go ahead and save that, let's now rerun this workflow. And we should now, 
And if we go into gray log and what we should see, let me just go ahead and go into my copilot log shipper. These are just past ones that I ran from a test. So we'll disregard those for now. And when I kick this off, we should see a new entry uh, be received into gray log again, because copilot is going to be the one shipping it off to our gray log uh, event to our gray log input. And sure enough, if we look at our response that we get back from copilot, I guess technically I could change that to send to Copilot, but whatever. Hopefully you guys get the picture. We see that indeed Copilot runs it to, returns to 200 and we get message forwarded to Greylog. And if we go into Greylog, and sure enough, we see our latest entry be received. If we scroll down to our, so we get our full payload that we're receiving from uh, Cloudflare. So we get all of the Cloudflare details. We see our customer code being set, so good. And then we also should see our integration being set and that is set to Cloudflare. So still, why are we setting the integration and the customer code? Well, here you can see that the data is being stored just within the default gray log index. We don't wanna store it there. We wanna store it within the customer's index that pertain to Cloudflare events. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let's first create our index. So if I go into indices within gray log here, I'll just call it uh, Cloudflare, I'll say lab. I'll give it an index prefix of Cloudflare dash whatever your customer code is, mine being lab. Uh, I'm just gonna set those to default because I'll delete this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select create index set. And now we see our Cloudflare lab index prefix has been created. All right, but we're not done yet because we still need to leverage the customer code and the integration field names to instruct gray log when you receive this type of log we're not going to just log it to the default index but we're going to log it to the cloudflare and more importantly the customer's dedicated cloudflare index so i'm going to go ahead and go into streams select create stream and i'll just call it the same cloudflare lab and the index prefix where this is going to be logged to is going to be the sorry the index set it, we're going to log it to the cloudflare lab and we're going to select remove matches from default stream and go ahead and save that and now under Cloudflare, I'm going to go ahead and select the rules here. I'm going to select just quick add rule will be fine. And we know one of these fields is going to be integration. And that integration, what do we want that to be set to? Well, since this stream is dedicated to Cloudflare events and only Cloudflare events, I'm going to go ahead and set the integration to Cloudflare. So I'll select create that rule. And because this pertains to the lab customer, I'm also going to set the requirement that the customer code be that to lab, which is what I've defined here, right? So integration Cloudflare, customer code lab. So go ahead and save that off. Let's go ahead and start this stream. So it should start to receive data. And now if we go ahead and rerun, re-simulate uh, receiving an event from Cloudflare, we should see our stream receive a message here because the condition would be true that the integration is Cloudflare and that the customer code is exactly lab. And sure enough, I just saw a message go through. If we select the stream, sure enough, we see our event and look at the index where it's being written to, our Cloudflare lab, right? So we've also handled the multi-tenancy to our stack. So again, the challenge that we're solving is that not all applications log the same. I wish they did, because then our job would be a hell of a lot easier. But when it comes to some troubling services or tools, like in this example, Cloudflare, where we could only output our detections to a webhook, rather than poking holes within our own network and infrastructure to publicly expose a webhook that Cloudflare's cloud could send to, we can actually leverage Shuffle's cloud to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and have you shuffle, receive the data from Cloudflare. But since my seam stack is ran locally, I'm gonna take advantage of the runtime location that Shuffle supports to be able to invoke my local running copilot, which can communicate with my local gray log and my local seam stack as a whole. So definitely not the only way to, to solve a problem like this, but I think is a fun and unique way that we're able to now expand our logging capabilities when it comes to our seam stack. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.